10 predictions for the upcoming campaign. 10. Man City will win the Premier League OK, not the boldest prediction first up, but it seems clear that Man City and Pep will win a third consecutive Premier League title in 1920, becoming the first side to do so since United in 2008-9. They may have only pipped Liverpool by a point in 1819, but there is a huge gap in performance levels. Klopp's defence marshalled by Player of the Year Virgil van Dijk may have conceded one fewer goal, but they massively overperformed expected goals against, with a metric suggesting City should have conceded four fewer. And in attack, there was no comparison, with City scoring three or more goals in 17 of their 38 games and topping the expected goals table by a massive 14. The commonly held opinion was that in order to catch City, Liverpool would need to add another forward to their roster, with their existing front three involved in 79% of their league goals last season. But yet, with transfer deadline day fast approaching, the Champions League winners haven't replaced Sturridge or Moreno, and have only signed a 17-year-old with 22 appearances under his belt. Meanwhile, their title rivals have signed the best emerging defensive midfielder in the world in Rodri, and some much-needed left-back cover in Angelino. Sorry, this is only going one way. 9. RB Leipzig will finish above Dortmund Whilst we generally applaud BVB's business this summer in bringing in Hazard, Brandt, Alcacer and Schultz permanently, their decision to sell Abdou Diallo to PSG and replace him with a 30-year-old Max Hummels beggars belief. But before we go any further on this rundown, a quick reminder to subscribe to Football Daily if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to never miss an upload. But that's not the reason we aren't backing Dortmund for second place behind Bayern this year. After all, they still have Akanji and Zagadou on their books, alongside world-class talents in the form of Sancho, Royce and a resurgent Mario Götze. It's actually because RB Leipzig went seriously under the radar last season. They may have finished 10 points behind Dortmund, but not only did they lose just one of their final 16 league games, but no one conceded fewer than their 29 league goals. Statistically the second best team in Germany last season according to XG, two places above Dortmund, they've managed to secure the services of the most wanted young coach in world football, Julian Nagelsmann. The 31-year-old managed to convert Hoffenheim, a fifth division side in 2000, into a team capable of two top four finishes in three years. With only Bayern and Dortmund managing to score more than their 70 league goals in 1819, we can't wait to see what Nagelsmann can do when he combines his attacking philosophy with Leipzig's solid bedrock. 8. Newcastle will be relegated The summer of 2019 will go down as one of the worst in Newcastle's modern history. Their fans began it believing their club was about to be taken over by the Binzide group, instantly transforming them into the, one of the world's richest clubs. But they have finished it having sold Iosu Perez, Hosselu and refused to buy Salomon Rondon. As if that wasn't bad enough, their Messiah Rafa Benitez, who had managed to secure consecutive mid-table finishes despite having a net profit of 0.5 million over the last three seasons, left to join Dalian Yafang, taking Rondon with him. In came Steve Bruce, fresh from leading Sheffield Wednesday to 12th in the Championship. Having last managed a game in the Premier League in May 2015, and with a 28% win percentage, the second lowest of anyone to manage 200 games in the division, Magpies fans are rightly concerned. With this amount of turmoil at the club, it'll take a monumental effort for Newcastle to avoid relegation, especially considering only Brighton and Huddersfield have scored fewer than their 81 league goals over the last two seasons. 7. Inter Milan to finish second Having finished 14 points clear last term and having spent £517 million over the last three seasons on the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Bonucci and De Ligt, not to mention bringing in free transfers of the quality of Adrian Rabiot and Aaron Ramsey, it seems highly unlikely that anyone else will be able to prevent Juve lifting their ninth consecutive Scudetto next May. But with Napoli having splashed over €70 million Euros already and Inter AC and Roma under new management, the race for second place is going to be fascinating. We believe that the appointment of Conte, a winner of a league title in four of his last five years in club management, makes Inter Milan the favourites for that spot. And the former Premier League winner has wasted no time in overturning his squad. Acardi and Nyingolin have been told in no uncertain terms that they are not wanted, Politano's loan move has been made permanent, and they have picked up Godin on a free. As if that wasn't enough, they have secured the services of two of the most promising central midfielders in Italy in Nicolo Barella and Stefano Sensi. With Conte able to field a back five of Asamoa, De Vrij, Godin, Skriniar and Lazzaro, shielded by Barella and Brozovic, you begin to see why the Nerazzurri fans are starting to get incredibly excited by their 2019-20 prospects. 6. Southampton to surprise Many people are predicting that Leicester City, Wolves, Everton and West Ham could all surprise the established order next year and spring an assault on that sixth place. But having spent a combined £250 million to date this summer, £52 million more than United, Arsenal, Spurs and Liverpool at the time of writing, we shouldn't really be that shocked if they do. So our surprise package for the 2019-20 Premier League campaign is Ralph Hasenhutl Southampton. Appointed in early December after a run of one win in their opening 16 games left Southampton 19th and Mark Hughes out of a job, 
the Austrians steadied the ship, eventually finishing five points clear at the drop. Able to get the most out of Southampton's crop of incredibly talented youngsters like Gunn, Valerie, Ward Price, and Redmond, the Saints finished the season taking 12.7 shots per game, the ninth best record in the division above Arsenal and Wolves. Their biggest issue has been converting these chances into goals, but Hassan Ottolot has acted decisively in the window to try and address that. He's brought in Danny Ings after he contributed a goal every 166 minutes in the league last term, highly sought after Moussa Genepro from Standard Liège, and Birmingham starlet Jay Adams, who scored 22 championship goals last term in a struggling Blues side. If any of these three get going, expect Southampton to ruffle some feathers next term. 5. Dean Smith for the sack this one seems a little harsh given that Dean Smith did a fantastic job at Villa after replacing Steve Bruce in early October. Back then, the club were languishing in 15th, just six points clear of relegation, but they managed to make the playoffs after winning 10 of their final 12 games. We all know what happened next. A penalty shootout victory over West Brom was followed by the triumph at Wembley, securing their return to the top flight for the first time since 2015-16. Aware that Villa played a monumental 52 games last season and that they only had 75 days before their first game against Spurs, Smith got his wallet out in a big way. Over £90 million has been spent so far, but £34 million of that went on Tyron Mings and Matt Target two players with 34 Premier League starts between them over the last two seasons. They haven't managed to bring in the impressive Axel Tunzebe after his loan spell last season, and they've taken a massive gamble in replacing 26-goal Tammy Abraham with Wesley Moraes, who was playing in Slovakia just four years ago. It could be a masterstroke, but that's a lot of pressure for a 22-year-old with no top-level experience. This could well end in disaster. 4. OGS won't last the season Whilst many argue that it was impossible to not give Solskjaer the permanent job after a fortuitous comeback against PSG in the Champions League last 16, including our very own Joe Tomlinson, the cooler heads in the team suggested waiting until the end of the season. As it turns out, they should have done just that. After winning 10 of his first 13 Premier League games in charge to leap up to fourth, they won just two of their final nine games to finish five points off Champions League qualification. Everyone who was at Old Trafford for their 2-0 humiliation at the hands of already relegated Cardiff City on the final day knew Oli had a job in his hands. Despite glaring weaknesses in central defence, central midfield and right wing, they have only managed to recruit two players at the time of writing. With just a few days of the transfer window remaining, they are no closer to bringing in the required centre-back, haven't replaced the departed Fellaini and Herrera, and have the overriding issue of Lukaku and Pogba's desire to leave. A glaring inability to get any deal over the line, United fans go into the 1920 season fearing for the future and facing a present which might well cost Solskjaer his job. 3. Arsenal for fourth With Chelsea set for a season without Eden Hazard, contributor of 49% of their league goals last term, and United in disarray, the path seems clear for Arsenal to return to the Champions League for the first time since 2015-16 next term. It seems highly likely that they will secure the services of both Kieran Tierney and Everton before the window slams shut. Tierney has the potential to develop into one of the world's best left-backs over the next five years, whilst 23-year-old Everton seems to be everything Gunas fans have been crying out for. He has averaged a goal contribution every 156 minutes for Gremio over the last three seasons and completed 3.9 dribbles and fired off 3.7 shots per 90 in the league last campaign. Already capped 12 times by his country, he'll arrive a Copper America champion, with his three goals, including the opener in the final, playing a crucial role in the Salazar's ninth triumph. If Emery gets these two through the door and signs a central defender, we see no reason why they couldn't land fourth spot. There certainly wouldn't be any excuses. 2. Atletico Madrid to lose third spot To call Atletico Madrid's summer chaotic would be a massive understatement. In mid-May, their talisman and top scorer of the last five seasons, Antoine Griezmann, announced his intention to leave and eventually joined Barcelona for £107 million. In the meantime, though, Los Rojibancos had set about reshaping their defence, hit by the departures of Luca Hernandez and club stalwarts Juan Fran Diego Godin and Felipe Luiz. In their stead, they've brought in an unproven 21-year-old from Brazil and Renan Lodi, Kieran Trippier coming off the worst season of his career, and a 30-year-old centre-back who has never played outside of Portugal in Felipe. Whilst the additions of Mario Hermoso, Marcus Lorente and Jair Felix prove that they can still attract some of Europe's best up-and-coming talent, Lorente has only played 21 La Liga games in three years and 19-year-old Felix had only finished one full 90 before Christmas. It will be one hell of an ask for them to instantly fit into Simeone's defensive system, which has seen a side concede an average of just 24 league goals over the last six seasons, and spark an attack which scored just 55 league goals last season, one fewer than Bournemouth. With Sevilla and Valencia's exciting recruitment, we wouldn't be surprised if Simeone's side slipped up next season. 1. Barcelona will win the Champions League On Tuesday the 7th of May, when the Barcelona players slowly trudged off the Anfield turf, having been humiliatingly dumped out of the Champions League for the second consecutive season, they probably couldn't imagine themselves lifting the big ear trophies for the sixth time in their club's history next year. But the Blaugrana hierarchy have reacted in spectacular style to that disappointment, 
by splashing the cash on Antoine Griezmann and Frankie de Jong for a combined 195 million euros. Whilst 32-year-old Luis Suarez retains the ability to dismantle domestic sides, his declining pace has seen him lose his edge on the European stage, with just six Champions League goals across 29 games over the last three seasons. Meanwhile, World Cup winner Griezmann has had no such trouble with an average of a goal contribution every 113 minutes in Europe over the same period. It also became clear in that demolition at the hands of Liverpool that with their starting midfield of Rakitic, Vidal and Busquets all the wrong side of 30, they needed an injection of youth. Step forward 22-year-old Dutch sensation Frank de Jong, whose 3.7 tackles and interceptions, 1.3 dribbles and 89% pass accuracy in last year's competition make him the archetypal Barcelona player. With a front line of Griezmann, Suarez, Coutinho, Dembele and the ageless Messi, not to mention the possible inclusion of Neymar, Barcelona are our outright favourites for a first Champions League in five years in 2020. So that was FD's predictions for the 2019-20 campaign. What did you guys think of the list? Get angry, get furious in the comments below. Tell me where you think we went wrong. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. See ya!